Okay, right now, I've printed out a picture of some apples. I'm in an apple frame of mind today. And what I'm gonna do is sketch it out first. I love to sketch work out first so I know where I'm going before I start painting. And it uh, just kind of really makes it easier for me so I don't have to do a whole lot of guesswork. So, right, so like I said, right now I'm just gonna go on and lay out the scene. Uh, just gonna focus on uh, some simple apples and try to get a pretty decent sketch of it. Thinking about apples, uh, drawing apples, it probably didn't sound that exciting, but once we start adding light and different effects to it, uh, as we start painting, then uh, everything's gonna, we're gonna add a lot of drama to it eventually. And we wanna make sure this is an 18 by 24 inch canvas. So we wanna make sure we fill up most of the uh, space. We don't want a lot of blank space at the end. And uh, that's something I always tell my students to try to make sure that you're using the canvas or whichever, whatever uh, platform you're using to draw or paint on, that you're using everything uh, wisely and making sure you're using most of your areas appropriately. And when you're drawing from an image, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but you do want to give it your own flair. So just the fact that you get um, enough of that image to be convincing, you're in good shape. All right. So we're actually not far off from where we want to be. Just want to make sure everything's laid out appropriately uh, for the painting. So make sure you have all your layers. You, um, we're going to be dealing with uh, background uh, behind the actual apples and the actual apples are going to be the middle ground and then the foreground is going to be here towards the bottom and to produce a good piece of artwork you always want to have those three elements uh, in it always want that foreground middle ground and background that's what's going to make your piece look more convincing And I think right now we're looking pretty good. We don't really need to add too many shadows uh, because the paint is going to take that and bring that to a whole nother dimension with the shadows. So right now, I think we have a pretty good start when we go into our painting. Yes, yeah, so we are going to be using acrylic paints uh, for this composition. So right now, I'm just kind of going through my uh, little area here pulling out colors that we're going to need. We're certainly going to need some green and brown and different shades. It's not just going to be one shade of red or green. You want to pull out different shades because again, that's what's going to make your artwork uh, really pop. And we're also going to pull out some colors that you wouldn't imagine us pulling out. Uh, at the time, we're certainly going to need black and white. And with the uh, original picture, it looks as though you probably have maybe four or five colors, but we're going to work about, we're gonna, probably going to work about 12 colors in there. And uh, you guys will see how we make that work. Let's see, we've got some different shades of red, uh, different shades of brown and green. And I want to work some blue in there too. I'm going to show you how that's going to pop later on. And I think we're doing pretty good. I think we need some yellow. Uh, let's see, and why not yellow ochre? 
as well. And as I look at the picture, uh, let's get some some true yellow as well as some orange. I see some oranges in that apple. So I think right now we're pretty good. And what I like to do, I like to lay my colors out. And I also, one thing I like to do because I don't like to do too much washing, I love to use just some old fashioned styrofoam uh, plates. These, this is what I use for my palette right here. So I'm going to put that there. There's something that we're going to use tomorrow. And I'll start also going through some brushes that I'm going to need. So with the brushes, uh, this is an 18 by 24. So we're going to need different size brushes from small to larger. So we're going to be using everything in between. And I like to keep my brushes uh, near. I'm going to use some sharp liner brushes as well. So I'm going to put those to the side. And we're also going to need water. And this fellow's been with me for a long time here. And what I do, because I have a, I have a neat little setup here. I don't have uh, actual water coming in, but I use my little water tank. And I just fill everything up from here. So this is one way you can use water. All right, so that's enough for now. And we're going to set that up right here. And we're also, if I could come behind you, also like to have a good amount of paper towels. Always going to need your paper towels. Hi, uh, this is Henry Blackman. I'm coming to you from my studio, Blackman Art Studio. And uh, just thrilled to be able to uh, do an original painting for you today. We're going to be doing a still life. Uh, just a few things about me. I am a product of DeKalb County Schools. I uh, grew up in South DeKalb where I went to Old Tilson Elementary School. And from there I started at Gordon High School, which uh, eventually became McNair High School, where I finished in 1990. Uh, after uh, high school, I went and uh, majored in art at Morris Brown College. I was there from 1990 to 94 and uh, attained my uh, fine arts degree. After that, I decided to work with kids, and I started my career in 94. Uh, as a substitute teacher, and I've been in education since for uh, 27 years. I'm currently teaching at Kelly Lake Elementary School in my old neighborhood and just thrilled to be able to give uh, my knowledge to the students in the neighborhood that I grew up in. And uh, again, just really, really excited to be able to bring to you a painting today. All right, so uh, we started by sketching out the uh, still life. We're going to be studying, doing a study of uh, apples today. And uh, I like to, when I'm doing work, I like to sketch it out so I know exactly where I'm going. But as you can see, it's sketched out here. And what we're going to do is start applying paint. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. That we're going to try to add a lot of drama to this uh, apple uh, still life. So I'm going to start, I always start my paintings in the background. So I'm going to start with a little black. But as you can see in this picture, even though you see black, we're going to do more than just put black paint in the background. And we're going to start off with it, with black paint. And if you notice my brush strokes, I'm not tight at all. I just like to just kind of get in there and have fun with it and just really dig into the canvas. And you're going to notice in just a few minutes that I'm going to start adding some blue, actually some dark Prussian blue to the black. And what that's going to do, as you'll see in a few minutes, it's going to really bring out that darkness and uh, it's going to make it jump off the page. Uh, painting is really, I kind of, I tell my students that it's kind of like magic. Uh, it's really an illusion. It's an illusion of color lines, shapes, as well as different dimensions you create from shadows. And that's what gives you that effect of realism. So we're just going to apply some more black about halfway through this apple here. 
And again, as you notice, I'm just kind of having fun back and forth with my brush strokes. Uh, no special technique to it, just having fun. Some uh, artists, they do it a whole nother way, but I just really like to be loose uh, in my artwork. And you're going to notice here, just about here, we're going to we're going to start transitioning over into some Prussian blue. And that's what's going to really make that background pop. And it's going to play nicely off the apples once we start adding those different colors to it. Now, like I said, we're going to get that Prussian blue in. And we're going to mix it a little bit into the black because you don't want to have that line where you notice where one color starts and the other one one color stops and the other one starts. So you're just going to start gradually working that blue in. And it's going to be mixed in with a little black. Again, just to have a nice smooth transition where you can't tell where one stopped and the other started. And that blue is going to play nicely off those reds and oranges that we're going to see shortly. You notice already we're covering a lot of ground. And again, you're just digging the paint in. And with these brush strokes, as I'm going back and forth, that's really creating a lot of texture. Uh, not sure if you're picking that up on camera, but if you were to stand in front of the painting, you would definitely pick up those different textures that are being created by the brush strokes right now. And it's just kind of fun and makes it lively. So a little more blue. We're getting a real nice transition right here. Now another thing that's really, really important when you're creating art and you're trying to give that some type of depth is um, light. Now the light, if you notice in the uh, original painting here, uh, the light is coming from the right side. So here, even though we have a lot of dark here in the background, we're going to add, I'm going to add a little bit more light uh, in the background because that light is coming from this direction. It's going to hit the apples here. And then we want to create a little bit of light in the background. Not too much because it is a dark background. All right, we're just about there. We're going to make another transition. So we've made one transition already from pure black, ivory black, to Prussian blue. And what we're going to do is just add a little bit of light. And that's going to help make the painting look convincing. And we're going to do that by adding just a little titanium white in just a few moments. And again, we're just playing around with the brush strokes, having fun with it. And when you're doing artwork, you really have to be loose. You gotta loosen yourself up. Now down here, we're gonna add a little bit more black because these apples are creating just a little bit, bit of shadow down here. You're gonna notice as we get through the composition that shadow is gonna play a very important role in the piece. And again, just going back and forth, having fun with it. Now a little bit more Prussian blue. And I like to load this paintbrush up with paint because you can cover a lot of ground if you put enough on it. 
Now, in this area, we're going to this area. We're going to do a little a, a second transition where we're going to start introducing some titanium white, and we're going to gradually do that. And you'll notice that it's starting to it's going to start getting a little light just up in this area, just giving us an indication of light coming from this side over here, it's directly hitting that. I'm going to work it into the dark. And again, you'll notice those brush strokes, they're not tight, they're very loose. And we're starting to get that effect of some light in the corners. We're just digging into the canvas. And hopefully you all can start seeing that transition. We're just going to go back over a little bit because we don't want to have a line, kind of like a cartoon line, where you can see where things started and stopped. We want it. To, uh, we want a good blending to take place within all the aspects of the painting. And again, that just helps with that illusion. Helps with a uh, to produce a convincing piece. So right now, I think we've got it going pretty nicely. We've got our dark area, kind of medium dark with that Prussian blue. And then we worked our way into a little bit of light, just showing that that light source is coming from this side. So now we're gonna dig in and start working on the subject of the painting and that is the apples. And the apples are located in the middle of the painting, and that's called the middle ground. So we've done the background, and right now we're going to head to the middle ground. And before I told you that background, middle ground, and foreground is very, very important when you're creating art, like this. And you really want to make sure you have those three because that's what, again, that gives you dimension. And that's something that you really want in your pieces. So now if we look at this apple from the original picture, uh, you'll see that it's red. But really if you look at it, and even if you look at a real apple, you're going to see more than red. You might see some greens in that apple. You might see some yellow areas, and where the light's hitting, you could see some pure white. So we're going to approach that uh, that way. We're going to have some dark areas and build our way up into light areas in this side where the, where the light is uh, showing, okay? So I like to start light. And what I'm going to do is go into kind of some red, true red, and let's do a little yellow, really almost making orange. And we're just going to work that in on this side right here. And again, if you notice, I'm doing the same brush strokes. I'm just having fun with it. and just working some color in. Now we're gonna go into plenty of detail in just a little bit. Make sure we round it out. And see, it's really good that the background is already done. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We can start working forward. But uh, right now what we're just trying to do is capture that shape of the apple. And acrylics are really cool to work with because you can paint pretty much over any dark areas. Acrylics dry really, really fast, so you can work them uh, really nicely. Uh, let's get some yellow areas in here. So again, just applying some red, a little yellow. And again, just having fun with those brush strokes. 
Now, if you notice about in this area, we're going to start making several transitions. There's a lot, even though it's just an apple, you think, oh, it's just a simple apple. There's a lot going on here. There is a ton going on in this simple in these simple apples. So let's look at what some of those things are. Now, to start with, we've got a real light area here. And just like the uh, impressionist artists, they use a lot of white in their, um, in their pieces. So I really like to use white. And you'll notice as we start getting light here, it's going to start creating a conflict or some drama between that dark in the, in the background. And we're going to start getting light in these apples. So what I want to do is add just a touch, not too much, just a little white here indicating where the light is really hitting the apple just a little bit. And we could actually add maybe a little bit of yellow in there. That yellow, yellow, and, uh, yellow added to white really intensifies it, just kind of gives it another dimension. So we're going to drop just a few highlights. We're going to drop a few more in uh, a little bit later. Okay. Now, as far as trans, uh, some more transitions go, we are going to start hitting some dark areas in this apple. smoothing everything out. Now, we have uh, a little white, some yellow, we've got a true red, but now what we're going to do is go into, we're going to clean my brush, get some of that white off because I don't want this area to be light at all, but uh, what we're going to do, do now is start adding some darker, um, some darker red. So what I'm going to do is start transitioning over into some crimson and we're going to start making that transition about right here. Now again, when we were doing the background, remember we don't want to start adding new colors and tell where one color starts and ends. You want to have some type of neat or some type of indication of blending in it. So you'll notice here that that crimson, I'm starting to work that and blend that a little bit into that red where we don't see that where we don't create a line where you can see where it starts and stop again. And you'll also notice again, illusion. Right here, we have an apple that we're gonna work with in a little bit, but that apple is gonna create, it's creating a shadow here in this area on this apple. So we've gotta get some dark areas right here. Okay, so we're still going to stick with that crimson and I'm going to add just a touch of black, not too much, but just a little bit of black with that crimson and we're going to create a line which we're going to blend again to create that indication of a shadow. And in a few moments you're going to notice that you're going to have a whole nother dimension to it. It's going to start, it's not going to look flat. And see, that's why lights, shading and lighting is so important in artwork because it really, really gives you, it makes it jump, it makes it jump off the page. So you've got to have those elements in there. And I'm almost at black down here at the bottom, but that does create, in real life, there's going to be a shadow here and it's going to be dark. And that's where you're going to start really convincing the viewer of what they're seeing. So again, we're going to start adding some more crimson here. And because the light is right here, you're going to get a lot of dark in this back area right here. And we've just got, again, some mixture of crimson and black. And again, you should start noticing how we're starting to begin to get a 3D effect. 
and that's exactly what we want. We want that 3D effect. We're going to go on and bring that shadow on back. And again, the same brush strokes, just having fun with it. And also creating a little bit of texture. Now we also have a shadow right here. All right, so so far we have created our background. We've got a good transition going on back there between that and the uh, apple. Uh, we're gonna go on and finish up this apple here. We still have a few more components to add. And uh, again, shadow and light is very, very important in this process. Uh, as you can see, because it's really starting to come off the page a little bit. So we're in the middle ground area. We've done the background, and now we are in the middle ground area, which is very, very important. So we're gonna go on and I'm gonna continue with some more red. And we just wanna bring some more uh, depth to our composition here. And we also want to make sure that everything makes sense. It has to make sense visually. Now we've got some more dark areas we're going to um, tackle right here in the stem you'll notice there's dark area here there's an indention here that we need to take care of so i'm going to go into a smaller uh brush size uh let's see here we'll do a smaller brush and we're going to go into a little black and a little bit of crimson to capture that area we just want to bring that out and again this is another component that you don't want to miss that's going to be convincing uh, in the overall product. And again, we want to smooth that out. So we've got some good dark area right now, but we don't want to leave it at that. We want to go on and go into some true red. And take some of that black off the uh, paintbrush. I want to go into some uh, true red and just kind of get too much there. And we just want to kind of blend that out where we're not seeing where, again, where color starts and stops. We want to blend where we can because that's what you see naturally as well. I think we've got some good blending here. All right, now we also need to take care of the stem. So we're going to go into, let's go into some yellow ochre. That's a brownish color. Uh, actually, we're going to mix a little burnt umber, which is brown, and a little yellow ochre to tackle the stem up here. And again, you'll notice I'm just really digging into, really applying pressure to the canvas. 
Now even as small as this stem is, and maybe to some as insignificant as it, as it might be, we still need to add some areas of light and dark to it. Now obviously, on this side here, I want to get a little bit more darkness going on. So I'm going to go into a little burnt armor and a touch of black just to create a nice little shadow back there. Okay, so I think we got a nice shadow going on right there. And now what I want to do is bring some light to the front of that. And I'm just going to, like I said earlier, I really love white. I just like how it makes things jump off the page. So I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm not going to do too much. But again, just showing you where that light source is coming from. You should be picking up that highlight. Because again, that light is coming from that direction. Now another thing I want to do, uh, just to make this uh, apple a little bit more dramatic, I want to add just a touch of white here in this area to make that highlight jump a little bit more. Like I said, some people, um, you know, every artist is different, but I just really love white. It just adds a lot of drama. At least I think it does. I just really want that highlight to stand out, especially against that black or that dark background. And we don't want to do too much because the apple is still reddish. And one thing about acrylic paint that I'm using, you add a little water to it. That helps thin it out a little bit if you need. And uh, it helps with blending as well, which I'm doing right now. It's not a perfect blend because I like, I like some of those chunky areas. It's just kind of my style. And I also want to, while I still have this small brush, I want to go back in here and just add a little bit more darkness in that area. And again, that just kind of makes that apple pop a little bit more. Just a little bit, not too much. And then that's going to lead us to, let's do a little bit more there. That's going to lead us to our leaf. Now, again, when you look at it, you see green, but there's different shades of green. So what I want to do is let's go into a medium green. I'm going to do a Kelly green. We're going to start there, and I'm going to add a little bit of light green. I think that's going to be a good start. And again, brush strokes, just having fun. I'm not tight. You just want to cover that shape. You've got plenty of time to go into highlights. And again, I like to create that texture. And you know what? I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring just a touch of brown in just a moment to this green. And again, you see, we're not just working with green, but there's several things you can do with it: light green, dark green, black, uh, white. There's a lot of things going on, so I'm just gonna add a touch. I want some of that brown coming in from. From that stem I think that'll be a nice transition into yeah I like that into that there we go into that green and now I want to mess around with a little uh, let's get a little yellow in there create another little highlight because those are things that you can see in nature as well Got a little yellow going on. Okay. And again, just having fun with it. Not too tight. I'm loose.
and just having a good time with it. Now, so watch my brush. Now, I want to create some shadow. Shadow, again, is extremely important. So I want to start working some shadow up in this area because, again, the light coming from the right side, um, this part here is going to be a little bit lighter, but you're going to start seeing some darker green. So I'm going to go in some Kelly green and just a touch, just a touch of black. And that should give me a nice shadow up top. All right, so let's go for it. Oh, this is fun here. This is fun. All right, let's go a little bit darker. I said we're going to have a dramatic painting. So let's create some drama. There we go. A little green, a little black. And again, you should start noticing a little bit of texture the way I'm kind of applying the brush strokes. They're not just smooth brush strokes. They're just really, there's a lot of texture being uh, simulated here. I'm going to put a little shadow just down here, kind of underneath. Just a little bit, not too much, because there's some good highlights here we're going to create because we've still got that light uh, coming from that right side, so we want to make sure we're capturing that. So right now we've got a good mixture of brown, uh, excuse me, uh, green. We've got a little brown there where the stem is, uh, creating some good effect. And what I want to do, you guys know I like white by now. So I want to add a little bit of white to that light green and make it pop. And we're going to apply it. Let's see, we're going to do it about right there. And again, I'm just moving the brush. It's, it's not real tight. I'm just really loose with it. You just kind of want to be fluid. You start getting too tight, uh, the viewer is going to feel that tightness. And we don't, we don't want you to feel tight. We want you to feel that looseness throughout. Let's see, we'll put a, another little highlight up there. You just kind of play with it. You can kind of dance, skip over a few little areas to create that highlight. Let's put a little bit right here. All right, I'm starting to like that. And then we'll just blend it a little bit down in that, that area. All right, I think we've got a good little highlight right now. And I'm looking at the apple again. I just want to do one more touch of white because I really want that to pop. Just a little bit, not too much. Just want that apple to jump a little bit more. Right. And I think we are good here all right so now let's see let's uh we've spent some time on the red apple we got another red apple uh in front of us but uh let's go to the green i want to play around with that a little bit kind of show you what we can do with it now as you look at this green apple right here you pretty much see green maybe a little light green you see white as well but i'm going to throw a little blue in there too just for a little added measure so let's start with i want to start light so we're going to make some light green with some white over in this area uh, again because that light is shining directly in this area right here 
And again, I'm really playing around with the brush strokes, not too serious, just having fun with it. It's very important to have fun with what you're doing. If you're not having fun, it's going to show. And we don't want that to show. All right, so we got a good light green going on right here. Just trying to bring that around a little bit. We're going to play with that a little bit more. All right, let's go a little bit dark in this area. And again, really loose brush strokes. You don't want to get too, again, too tight. That's very important. I used to have a big problem with that in college, but I had a professor, two professors, Lee Ransaw at Morris Brown College and Louis Del, the great Louis Del Sart, who uh, had me study Impressionism. And uh, I started to learn how to really loosen up and not be hyper-realistic. You do have those artists that are really hyper-realistic and everything just looks, you know, real. But uh, for me, that just really wasn't my style. I could do that, but I wasn't having fun with it. I just really uh, wanted to loosen up. So their uh, handiwork, you know, having me study different uh, impressionistic artists really uh, got me going uh, to where I am today. I'm still developing my work, but it was a big help at the time. Now we're gonna go a little bit darker green here because we're starting to hit some shadows here. And we're actually gonna go darker than that in just a few. So let's work some more green in the composition. Just a little bit darker. And again, the brush strokes, I'm just going back and forth, just having fun like I'm painting a wall, <laughs> which is not always fun, but <laughs> I think you get the point. Again, just kind of blending uh, those greens together. In this area, I want to add some more uh, light. So we're going to go into a little bit more white while that green is still wet. I'm going to add a little bit more white. Just create more of a highlight right there in that area. And I hope you're starting to notice all of this uh, new color playing with that background. And again, just going back and forth. A little bit more white on this side. We're starting to pick up a little bit more 3D effect again, illusion. It's just an illusion. Now, I wanna start going into, I'm gonna get a smaller brush and we're gonna start going into some shadows of a few, a little deeper green. So what I'm gonna do is get a touch of black and then I'm going to go into some green, some Kelly green right here. Let's add a little bit more black. I want to start creating a shadow here where you have the indention where the stem is. Got to have that. Let's go with another brush. 
All right, here we go. So we've got to have that shadow. Again, we're going to blend that out. And remember what I said earlier, you can, the one thing about acrylics, you can thin it. Unlike oils, you have to have a certain, uh, like turpentine or uh, linseed oil to thin it out. You can just simply use water to blend it out the way you want. Good old water. A little bit more water. Green. And again, we've got a nice little blend starting to take effect. I don't want to take away all that shadow, but I think you see what's happening. Again, you told your uh constantly looking at your inspiration which is this uh, original painting here you're looking back and forth and just seeing what's there you can add live as much as you want to a little bit but you do want again those shadows and different things to make sense so I'm going to go into just a little bit of black not too much because I really need that dark in there. That invention is really, can really get deep. So we want that to be prevalent in the piece. We don't want to overdo it. Just a little bit softly. And this time I'm not trying to dig into the painting. This, on this, I just need that indication of depth. Like it's really, that stem is really embedded into the apple. I think we have just about got that. Now, we want to, this apple here in the front is creating a shadow uh, behind this apple and underneath. So we want to go on and make sure that we have that tackle. So I'm going to go into uh, some more green, darker green and just a touch of black because I need to make Nice shadow back here. Ah, that's good. I like that. I'm just going to bring it around. And you're going to see that this is going to start again. Convincing the viewer that this thing is popping off the page. should start noticing how that shadow is beginning to really make this apple just like the other one kind of pop off the page. Now we need a good shadow down there as well because it's underneath. There's always going to be a shadow underneath an apple. So let's go on and tackle that. Let's just say that shadow lives somewhere right about here. We'll bring them up a little bit. And 
you're always going to see, you'll see me jump back up to an area that I was in before. As the paint starts to dry, it's going to uh, take on a life of itself, and there's going to be some times where you need to kind of rework an area a little bit, maybe not too much, but you'll see that, and you just tackle it as it comes. And right now, to make this shadow really convincing, I'm just going to go into some pure black, uh, right in that back area, right here, and right up under here, just to bring that strong shadow out. Not too much. Again, just to add a little bit of drama to what we have. And again, this painting is not hyper realistic. I'm not really, that's not really my style, but uh, hopefully you're getting somewhat of an impressionistic uh, indication of what you can do. Uh, everything doesn't have to be photographed. Matter of fact, I, I, for me, I'd rather it not be photographic because I just simply take a picture. But I like to see the artist's interpretation of what's there. And uh, I think that's. Uh, a fun part of it. Alright, and I want to go back and add just a little bit. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to tap with the stem, and just like that first one in this apple. We're going to go to a little yellow ochre. And that's really going to make it pop. And like we did with the first stem, we're going to have to add shadow and light to it. So let's go on and do that now. All right, so I've ran down some some brown, some yellow ochre. Just flat yellow ochre. Now, in the back and down in this little crevice, I want to darken that up just a little bit because it is coming out of a kind of out of a dark place right there, so I'm going to darken up the stem down at that point. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of darkness to the back, not too much. And then I'm going to go into some light and just give it a Slight highlight. Again, not too much because you don't want to kill those um, those good light areas or dark areas that you have. And looking at the apple, I want some more highlight right here in the front because that light is coming in strong in this area. And that's good. And I really want some right here. And again, I'm just kind of Got it dancing across. Well, I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing. I am loving that highlight right there. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I'm starting to like that a lot. It's a little bit of green. And I wanted with this apple, I wanted to also add just a touch of blue in this area because I just wanted to do something different. So I'm going to get some a little phthalo blue and a little light green. I'm just going to kind of mess around with it. Not too much, but I think it's just going to give it a little bit more depth. It's going to give it a little bit more depth. And now I'm going to smooth that out. And one thing as a painter I like to do, and I learned from some really uh, excellent artists through the years, is that a lot of times, and you'll notice this in different uh, artists' work, it's really cool when you can bring some colors 
from your background and bring them into the foreground. Uh, it just really makes that piece whole. You know, you don't want these separate areas where you have one color and then you're breaking up into another color, but they, they, there has to be a union between your subject matter and the background, which is often not that important. But you want to make sure that you tie those things together. So we have some phthalo blue uh, back here. But you want to add, I want to add some in that apple too, just to kind of marry those two, uh, those two sides. Just a touch, not, not a lot. It'll just to give you an indication that there's, uh, yeah, a little blue in there as well. All right, so right now I'm happy with that. So we're going to go on and get ready to do this apple. Now, this apple in the, uh, in the foreground it's going to be a little bit lighter because obviously there is nothing blocking it and the light is going to hit it directly. So we're going to um, certainly go into some red. I'm going to go into some oranges too uh, because when you look at a real apple, there is actually some orange there. So we want it. We don't want it to just be red. And again, it's going to be a little bit lighter than that first apple and we're just right now laying down some color I'm going to put a little yellow in there too let's have a little fun with it matter of fact it's almost a pumpkin color not quite but close so again we're just laying down color and it down There's going to be some awesome highlight in this one. All right, let's get some yellow. We're going to take some yellow and a little bit of green on this side. Oh, yeah. It's like autumn. Capturing the shape of it. Doesn't have to be perfect because we know that uh, apples are organic shapes, fruits and vegetables. So it does not have to be, and it should not be, a perfect circle. We want that to be organic like it naturally is. And right now, let's start adding some light areas to it. We don't want it to be too dark. All right, let's go into some. I'm going to go into a, some white and just a touch of yellow. Let's get some highlights up here. It's pretty light, but we're going to get that right. We're going to get that right. Again, just laying down color, and then that looks pretty rough. But uh, once we start adding those highlights and those shadows, we're going to be where we need to be. No color. Laying down color. Right, let's start bringing some of this light down here. shadow on this side. So let's go into some crimson for this back corner. Again, all about the illusion of light and shadow. So we're using crimson right now to try to create some shadowy areas.
my most exciting part. I love the highlights. That's just my favorite part, the highlights. So we're going to add more shadows now. Kind of blending in as we go. Again, a little bit more crimson. Kind of capturing the shape of the apple. So I'm going to go into some white and uh, a touch of yellow to start creating some highlights. Got a little bit more yellow there. Try to give that round effect as you're doing that because you know the apple is it is round. Again, just playing with highlights. with it because uh, you still again want to capture the shape you don't want to overdo it but you don't want to underdo it either because they are important So I want to go back into, um, I think we got some good highlights, but we need to go and create just a little bit more shadow. Uh, that's going to bring it out, just to bring some more depth. And you kind of, you notice sometimes you just kind of go back and forth with the shadow and the highlights, uh, and that's, that's normal. You don't necessarily, when you finish with one, then you do the other when you finish. So you just have to kind of dance around and play with it and uh, get it to where you want it. Let's see, some more crimson. Oh, let's get some more on that side. Again, you know, everything is not perfectly smooth. That's not my style. Some people are more realistic. Uh, you got some a world of talent out there, but everybody's different. That's the one thing I really love about art. Everybody is different and uh, exciting. That's what I try to get across to my students. And you're not trying to be Mr. Black. You're trying to be the best you. 
Hopefully you can be. Oh, that's a good shell right there. Just work in some more shell. And then just want to come off the page. Smooth it out a little bit. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we have been working on a still life painting here of uh, three apples. Uh, so far, we've knocked out the background and we've knocked out two apples. And we're still working on this, uh, the apple in the front. So we're going to start adding just a little bit more shadow and a few highlights. And then we're going to complete the painting uh, in the foreground here, the uh, platform that the apples are uh, sitting on. So right now, let's get back into some more red. Uh, we're going to start working or complete this area here in the background. We need more shadow, just a little bit. Uh, remembering that this uh, apple is in the front of the other, so it's not going to be as dark as this one here. But still, we're going to need the appropriate shadows, even if it's not as much. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. And I think we're looking pretty good so far. And uh, earlier I was talking about uh, how each artist has a different interpretation of what they see, which I've always loved. Uh, I don't like watching and looking at the same thing. Uh, in the old days, when we're talking about Leonardo da Vinci and those uh, artists, you became a professional artist when you could copy the master. And that's not how we want to teach now. That's how they did it back in the past. But now we want, we want students to have some leeway in what they do. We want them to be able to express themselves and uh, show their, their creativity, not someone else's. So that's what I really love about art, visiting galleries and just seeing different people. I just like how different everybody's interpretation is and uh, just makes that whole process exciting. Let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. Still rounding out this apple. And um, You'll notice, hopefully, there is a lot of choppiness in my work, and I just really like that. That's me. Uh, again, somewhat impressionistic. I know I've used that term several times, but I just like the looseness and the almost I don't care <laughs> attitude of that style. So we're just adding some highlight now, a little bit more highlight. Let's put a little green in there. Mix a little green with that yellow because there is some green there, just a little bit, not too much. Again, just to give it some depth. Okay, I think that's working out nicely. There we go, not too much. A little bit on this side. Again, not too much. And we're still going to have to tackle uh, that stem so we're going to go and work on this stem right now and again we're going to go into some burnt umber as well as yellow ochre it's a good combination and I think I'm going to go a little bit darker Just a little bit dark on that stem we don't want it to get lost and that apple, that uh, yeah, that's pretty strong. So we're just going to add a little bit of black, a little bit of burnt umber. And since the shadow is on the other side, remember the light is coming from the right side. We're going to add a little shadow right here. And if you notice, when we put that in, that kind of brought that stem out. So that stem is not lost now. And let's bring some of that. Bring a little bit of that brown into the apple a little bit, just to kind of 
bring out some more shadow. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring some of that down here. That shadow needs to be a little bit stronger down here. Not too much. But again, uh, earlier I was saying that all the colors in your artwork, you want to try to incorporate those colors all over the painting. Because it really, again, uh, makes things stand out. It makes it, it, it unifies your piece. I also want to put some, since the light again is coming from that angle, just want to put a little bit, just a little dash of white there. And again, let's put a little bit of strong highlight right here in this area, maybe right there, just giving us a good indication of that light. Don't want to overdo it, but you do want it to be, it needs to be there. Just a little bit. And I think we're cooking with gas right now. All right, so now what we want to do is go to our bottom area. That's going to be a, uh, some foreground as well. I always tell my students that you don't want to create a uh, piece of work and just have it floating in space. There needs to be a grounding of those elements in your uh, in your artwork, which you'll be painting today. So we're going to use some some more yellow ochre. And shadows are going to come in very, very important in this area as well. So we're just using a little yellow ochre. And again, I'm just kind of using some choppy brush strokes. And this is, uh, as you can look, as you can see, there's a lot of area right here we need to cover at the bottom as well. Not, not as much as the background, but there's still a substantial area that needs to be worked right here. So again, I'm just having fun with those brush strokes. Nothing too tight, just loose, having fun. And still digging into the canvas somewhat because we wanted to, wanted to get in there real good. And with the light coming from the right side, we're gonna have some strong light uh, right here in this area. So we're gonna use a lot of white in just a few seconds. Again, just laying down color. Real choppy, but again, that's my style. Uh, some artists are real smooth and more realistic, which is okay. But again, I just prefer it to be a little bit choppy and uh, somewhat impressionistic. Now what I'm going to do in this area before this uh, completely dries, acrylic by the way dries very, very fast. So you've got to that's the one disadvantage at times when you're trying to rework areas, it does dry up very fast. So when you're blending, you got to really get to it. So what I'm going to do is add some white here in this area to lighten it up because of course, again, the light is coming from this side here. So I just want to add some choppy uh, white elements here. So let the viewer know that that light is coming in from that angle. We don't want to lose all that yellow ochre, but we do want that light to stand out. Hopefully you're picking up on that right now as I go. I'm just going to drag some more across. Now it looks like I need to get some more, put some more paint there. So I'm going to do that right quick. Some more yellow ochre. And again, we're just going to go on across the painting with that. Again, just going back and forth, having fun with it.
and you might go over some areas that you didn't intend to, but that's okay. Remember, it is a painting, it's not a photograph. And it does not have to be hyper real, unless you want it to be. So as you can probably hear, I'm really working that canvas because you can hear my easel a little bit digging in. But we want to make sure that color's in there real good. And we still have several other things that we need to do with this foreground as well. We're not going to leave it just like this. Just want to cover. And again, the um, the choppiness of brush strokes that I'm using right now is actually working to my benefit because uh, the apples are sitting on kind of a somewhat wooden uh, surface. And you know, wood has different little textures to it and somewhat of a choppiness anyway, naturally. So that kind of works to my advantage. And we also have some light areas uh, coming over towards this way. So we want to capture that. Again, just long brush strokes in this area. Don't want to overdo it. You don't want to use uh, lose all that yellow ochre. Just coming across. And we've actually got some where well, the light is hitting it in the back a little bit. And let's see, we've got some areas right here where the light is kind of shining through. Now it's about time for us to start tackling shadow because there are some shadows uh, on the wood part, on the bottom part as well, so we need to capture that. So what I'm going to do, because that's going to be really dark, I'm going to use some more black, but I also want to use some Prussian blue, because that's going to make those shadows pop. So let me see which brush. Let's use a slight smaller brush. I'm going to use a little black. Let's add a little Prussian blue. And let's see, let's start the shadow. This is a strong shadow. This is going to be a strong shadow up under this apple. So we're going to start creating that now. In the background, it's actually going to kind of blend in with the bottom of the apple a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring some of that dark area up into the actual apple. And let's see, we'll bring it around. We're going to try to smooth this out. That's going to be some work. But we have to have that shadow. Again, we want to create that illusion of a little realism. So we've got to, there's not going to be a line where it just, a line starts and then it just stops. We want to blend it a little bit. The shadows do blend somewhat. And we want to take that shadow over a little bit so it's not just a solid line of black impression blue we're kind of gradually working it in and right now i think we've got a good shadow going right here it's blending nicely into the uh, yellow ochre and i think that's a real good shadow right there all right so let's do it again more black impression blue uh, this apple is going to need a shadow as well. So same thing with the first apple. We're going to go on and bring that over. Kind of blend it somewhat. and drag it over a little bit where it kind of blends into that yellow ochre. Just want to smooth that out just a little bit.
and I think it could be just a little bit darker like we have it right here so let's go on and do that now I'm just going to use a little pure black to because it should be darker right up under that apple it should definitely be darker and then it gradually that shadow gradually lightens up just a little bit but it should be very dark right up under it again that's what's, that's what's going to make it look like it's coming off the page or off the canvas somewhat Again, all about the illusion. Let's put a little shadow back there. And we can blend that into the actual apple a little bit. Again, we want some good, strong shadows. That battle between light and the shadows and you'll notice I'm going back into to some areas that I was in earlier that's okay that is uh, expected when you're creating nothing wrong with that so make sure everything is nice and strong Okay. And looks like we have another shadow. Let's clean this brush off. We got a little red in it. We don't want that in the yellow ochre. So we've got another shadow. So again, we're going to go into black and Prussian blue. And we've got a strong one up under this green apple. And what I want to do, because this, uh, the yellow ochre on this side has uh, dried up pretty fast. I told you acrylic dries fast. I'm going to go on and add a little bit of yellow ochre in there just to manage that and blend it a little bit. It's still going to capture that dark. Let's add a little bit more. But we need that blend there. And I think that's starting to work out a little bit. Let me soften that line up a little bit. We're just going to add a little white. Just blend it a little bit. Again, somewhat choppy, but that, again, is my style. All right, so right now we're looking pretty good. Now, at this point, what I want to do is kind of look back at what I have. Um, there are several areas that you're going to find yourself when you're creating uh, different areas. Uh, where you might need to retouch or just add some more highlight or shadow. So right now, this is a good time for me to kind of observe and see what I have. And I see some areas. I want to soften this out a little bit more, so I'm going to go on and do that. So right now, I'm looking over the whole painting and seeing where I can uh, just kind of add uh, a little bit more detail. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to be all over the place right now, uh, adding where I need to. But you want to make sure you're not doing too much because uh, actually working on a painting, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool and fun. But one of the most important things that you can do uh, that you have to know is when to stop. You have to know when to stop because you can get to going and thinking you need this and need that. And uh, a lot of times you're just fine. You don't need that extra element at all. So you have to know when to cut it off. So uh, there are 
a few more highlights I want to highlights and shadows I want to bring out just a little bit more so I'm going to go on and do that now let's see I'm going to need a give me a little liner brush here we go so like I said earlier I love I love white as my pure white is my highlight so I'm just going to go back in a few more areas and just kind of put a dash and just bring it out a little bit more just certain areas you just dance around a painting and just see uh, where you might want a few more things to happen and again you don't want to overdo it but you just want to kind of tighten it up at this point because we have the actual um, subject matter capture but again we just want to make sure that your highlights and shadows are where you want it to be I like this light coming in right here so since I have that strong light right here I'm gonna go behind in front of this apple and bring that light and it looks as though that light is coming from here and shining and going right behind that apple. I like that a lot. Again, just picking out a few areas. Again, just to highlight. Not too much. a few dashes of things going on and right now I'm looking at things and I think think it's a go I think things look pretty good look pretty good but there's one more thing I need to do every artist needs to sign their work <laughs> so we're gonna go on and do that right now and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use black little phthalo blue and I'm gonna sign a bright I like to sign in the bottom right hand corner so I'm just gonna put my John Hancock right here H B H Blackman And I am the third. And this is the year 20, 21. And that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I hope you had fun watching uh, our still life today. Uh, hopefully you learned something. I think I did as well. Uh, so I really do appreciate you joining me, joining me in my studio and uh, look forward to doing this again, actually. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everybody, and look forward to seeing you again.